Hi guys, and welcome to a Hector Lecture Guide to the fight Sephiroth Unreal. This guide is based off of the extreme version of the fight at minimum eye level. At the beginning of the fight, have your main tank pull the boss to the middle of the arena and face away. Healers be warned, this phase hurts. Throughout the phase, without warning, the boss is going to use cleaving mini tank busters on the main tank, and raid wides are going to exude out from the boss. Each of these hits fairly hard on their own. The issue is how frequent they happen means that you're going to need to regularly rotate through your mitigations like reprisal, addle, your physical range mitigation, and making sure you keep everybody topped up because they can sometimes happen back to back and do more than half of the party's health. After you have one of those cleaving mini tank busters and two of the raid wides and then one more cleaving mini tank buster, the boss starts its first mechanic. Four orbs are going to spawn always in a T shape, one middle, and then three others, either all on intercardinals or all on cardinals. You're looking for where an orb's missing. In this case, it's up in the top right or northeast, and your whole group is going to head in that direction. Now, if you look at how I've positioned everyone, this is done on purpose because we're about to get two stack markers, one on a random DPS and one on a random healer. To deal with these, we have all the DPS stack together, and we have the healer stack with the off tank. Main tank is in the middle, both to allow everybody to get their uptime and also because these stacks give a physical vuln up for a couple of seconds after you're hit. It prevents you from being in both stacks, but it also means that if the main tank is in either stack, they risk getting huge damage from the next auto attack. If you see the symbol next to your name, main tank, don't panic, pop some cooldowns or potentially your invuln and stay alive. The green orbs are going to grow in size, but as long as we're positioned as we are here, we're good to go. The stacks go off one at a time, and healers want to heal up very quickly afterwards, as the boss will be using raid-wide damage shortly after. Pull the boss middle, face it away, and prepare for a tank buster. You'll see the boss wind up a punch. There's no cast bar for this, but when you see this animation, that's when the tank should be popping their cooldowns. My personal recommendation for how hard this hits is to have your main tank kitchen sink the first tank buster, pop every cooldown that you've got, and for the second tank buster of this we see, we'll invuln it instead. The hopes being that we skip the third and any other tank busters. Be warned, your healers need to watch your tanks healthier because there is one of those cleaving mini tank busters immediately afterwards. Next up, you're going to see a green orb spawn, and as soon as you see this, everybody in the party should stack in front of it. We're going to have to spread shortly, but before that happens, the boss is going to wind up a 180 degree cleave. This is aimed at a random player, so by all stacking towards the green orb, those two attacks overlap, and we get all of the room behind the boss to be able to spread. The green orb will start to grow first. Make sure you're close enough to the boss's hitbox to not be inside it so you don't pick up Voln stacks, and wait for the green and pink circles to appear. That's the cue that the boss has entered this animation which means that the cleave is now aimed where the boss is currently facing. He will not turn around until the cleave is over. Immediately have your group run to the back of the side. My recommendation is have the pink circle go all the way directly behind the boss to the back of the arena and have your green circles kind of YOLO spread close. You can assign positions for this, but there is plenty of room, and as long as you're not overlapping too, you're good to go. Be warned that the green circle still stays for a couple seconds after this all goes off, so don't immediately run back into it. Once again, face the boss away, and your main tank's going to get their second tank buster. This is the one I recommend invulning just to be able to save some MP and some effort for your healers. And from this point onwards, the entirety of this phase repeats. The, uh, the, to end this phase, you need to get the boss to either 65% or lower, and even if they're in the middle of the mechanic, they'll stop the mechanic and they will enter the next phase. To see this happen, the boss becomes untargetable, heads towards the top of the arena, and you start to see adds spawn. Now, there's two types of adds we get. The larger ones are Kakma. These need to be taken by the main tank. They hit fairly hard with occasional mini tank busters. Don't worry, they don't cleave, they just hurt. Uh, and the Kakma also give magical vuln up stacks to that main tank. This is important because... The other adds are Binas, and they do magic damage. That's why the off tank is going to be taking exclusively the smaller Binas, while the main tank takes exclusively the Kakmas. Be warned, anytime you kill one of these, a raid-wide hit goes off. The one from the Binas is fairly weak and can be healed up pretty casually. The Kakma one hurts and should either be mitigated, shielded, or make sure the party is at full health. 
I recommend as soon as you've established aggro correctly, pull everything middle so that you could still be damaging the Kakma with the cleave from the AoEs. There is no hurry to kill these. There's not an enrage timer happening. Take your time with this. It's just making sure that you don't kill them too quickly so that your healers can't keep everyone alive. My recommendation, given that there are 12 Binas and two Kakmas total, kill the six Bina, then the one Kakma, then six more Bina, and then finally heal up for the final Kakma. So here we kill three. As soon as you kill a set of Binas or a Kakma, the next set of that same ad type will spawn. If you're not quick enough, that next ad will just spawn. So that's really the only time limit here is kill the first Kakma before the second one spawns. But you should have more than enough time to kill the six Binas and then heal everyone up to kill the first Kakma, which lets out a big raid wide. From this point, you're going to get another set of three Binas and a Kakma spawning. Once again, pull the middle with the exact same aggro. Main tank taking the Kakma and off tank taking the Binas. Kill the three Binas. Heal up through the damage. Heal the next three Binas. Heal up through the damage once more. And finally, you can take out the Kakma. Assuming you've survived all of that, the boss is going to fall off the edge of the arena. The stage is going to transition and you've entered the final phase. Sephiroth reappears much larger than before. When this happens, you want your entire group to stack middle, preferably use the four-way marker that I've shown, uh, and wait for the ultimate attack to go off. Heal up through this, it doesn't hit too hard, and shortly afterwards, the boss is going to become targetable. Once the boss becomes targetable, you need to wait because you're about to get the probably the most commonly failed mechanic in this phase, Yisad. It's a twister. If you've not experienced that before, when you see a yellow flash, that's your hint. You need to move because where everyone was just stood, there's going to be spikes shooting up. Be aware that we won't always be stacked for these, so don't move to where somebody else was. You want to spread out to a new location anytime you see that yellow flash. Next up, the boss is going to give everybody one of two debuffs. Four players are going to have the orange force against might debuff, and four players are going to have the green force against magic debuff. These are affecting our physical and magical defense, but all you really need to know is that the orange debuff protects you against orange things, like the towers we're going to see. The green debuff protects you against green things, like the tethers we're going to see. As this starts, Sephiroth's going to whip his balls out, and you need to look and make sure you match your debuff color to the color of the orb. So orange players go on the orange side, green players go on the green side. With the orange players, this is a great time to non-verbally communicate something. In a second, two of the orange players want to go across to where the green side is. So we have two of those players pre-position a little bit near in the middle just to say, hey, I'm going that way. If the hit goes off and you're on the right side, you're good. Two towers spawn. Have all of the green players go to the front of the boss and have at least one orange player in each tower. For safety, I'd recommend having two just in case somebody forgets or is late getting to their tower. While waiting for the towers to go off, some green orbs are going to appear, and shortly afterwards, all of the orange players are going to receive a tether. This tether will kill them unless taken by a green player, and since all the green players are hugging the boss, all they have to do is wiggle around up there to grab the tethers. These tethers will target them with magical damage that will do absolutely nothing to them as long as they're the ones that have it, so you can completely zone out blues as soon as you've got a tether. Have all of your orange players go to hide from the growing green orbs. There's always a safe spot directly under the boss, and there's always safe spots in the back of the arena. Though, if I rewind things just for a second, once the tethers show up, there is actually a safe spot that's always available, though it may be incredibly small, up where near my 3 and C way mark are. You might find it easier to position there both to get more uptime and to make the next mechanic simpler. However you resolve this, afterwards two more towers appear, and you need to very rapidly make sure at least one orange player is in each tower. Pop sprint here if you need. You finally get one more set of balls, and these will be the opposite, so just make sure that you match colors again. And if you've done all that correctly, you're good to go. The color debuffs will fade. Immediately after this, we're going to get Earth Shakers. This is quite quick. One healer and one DPS is going to get an Earth Shaker appearing on them. We need these players to spread away from the group and also get away from the boss. Unlike Earthshakers in a lot of other fights, these do distance-based damage, which means that we need our healer and our DPS with the Earthshaker to be far away from the boss. For this, we have the healer always go to A, the DPS always go to B, and everybody else stacks in the middle at 4. If you manage to get there in time, after a couple of seconds, the Earthshakers are about to go off, but before they do... Ye sad flash, so everybody just needs to move from where they are. You can move directly forward, and you're good to go. 
Shortly afterwards, the boss is going to rise up and the chest is going to be glowing. This is a hint that the boss is about to cast dot, uh, dat, however you want to pronounce it. This is a spread. Everybody needs to spread out. The first hit will always target the main tank for something that hits quite like a tank buster, so use a cooldown. The other three target random players for pretty heavy damage, but this can be healed. It does not require mitigation. Where you spread does not matter. These spreads are very small. Just make sure you're not stood together so that these don't overlap. We get another set of towers, but since we have no orange debuffs, these need to be taken using the tank's higher defense. Have one tank in each and have these just be pre-assigned. The main tank takes the left tower, off tank takes the right tower, and potentially use a cooldown if you've still got one. After the towers fade, the boss is going to pull balls out and everybody wants to stack up at D for the mechanic afterwards. From this point onwards, when you see the balls, but you don't have a debuff, this is just raid-wide damage. It will hit pretty hard, so healers be warned. After the raid-wide damage, we get quite possibly the trickiest part of this whole fight, the knockback dance. Blue B for A. We are going to see a blue knockback circle spawn where we're already stood. We stand in the middle of it. We wait for a Yisad flash. We move to get knocked back to B. We run to 4. We get knocked back. We move to get knocked back to A. Here it is in full. And this pattern will always be the same. While the green orbs can vary slightly in where they are, they always spawn roughly on the left side of the arena, which makes this always work. The first orb's going to spawn on the back left, which is why we all stack in the blue circle that appears. Wait for the Yisad flash and then move to get knocked back to B. Start running. The next knockback is going to be in the west, but you need to get to four. As long as you're at four or closer, you will survive that knockback. Finally, a third knockback circle is going to appear, and you want to get knocked back to A so that you're not in the other green circle growing in the north. This knockback pattern changes very little, so you can always do blue B4 A, and you're good to go. Shortly afterwards, we get another set of earth shakers. We deal with these exactly the same as before. Healer at A, DPS at B. There's no yeast sad with this one. You just stand, wait for the damage. The dats, or dot, that hits afterwards does have a Yisad during it, so once again, spread out. When you see the flash, move to a new location. As the raid wides are going off, these spikes are going to shoot up, and you need to make sure you're not stood where anybody else was just stood. More towers for the tanks to take with a cooldown. And once again, we see balls, and just like the first time, we're going to stack D ready for these. Once the raid wide damage goes off, healers need to heal up quite quickly because we're about to get another raid wide. The boss will lower himself down, and he's about to try to blow us all off the arena. This does raid-wide damage and also shoots everybody to the back of the arena. As long as you're in the boss's uh, inner hitbox, you'll survive this no problem. After the knockback, the boss spawns a set of five adds. The Storm of Words in the south is the most important one for everyone to focus. All DPS and healers should focus on killing it as it's casting Revelation. If this cast bar goes off, there's a big knockback that might send you to your death, but more importantly, it makes a future mechanic completely impossible. The other four adds are Minas, and I recommend having one tank each take two Minas. Simply put, the tanks go to their tower position, they grab the Minas, they hang out at their tower position, while everybody else hangs out roughly middle so they can get heals where necessary, and focuses on DPSing down the storm of words in time. Now, healers, be warned. There's a lot of damage coming. You're going to get what is essentially a raid wide with the balls. Heal up through this. Tanks are about to get towers, and they're already taking a lot of damage from the Bina, so very much watch their health. Tanks use cooldowns here. During this tower, there's going to be a Yisad flash. So when we see the flash, we all move. Everybody's roughly middle other than the tanks. The tanks just move to the side of their tower to dodge their Yisad. Everybody else runs away from middle. After this happens, while the second orbs are going off, once again, healers be healing up, but we add tanks, you can now pull the adds middle. The Storm of Words should die shortly afterwards, and now you can focus on keeping everybody alive while killing the Binas. Once again, be careful, they do that raid-wide damage when they explode, and since the healers have been healing through a lot of raid-wide damage, you might not have enough health to survive if you kill them too quickly. Once you've killed all the Binas, or before then, eventually the boss does one more flash. Just dodge away from middle, the same as we've done before. And we get another set of balls for even more raid-wide damage. 
after all of this has happened, you'll have noticed that if you've killed the Storm of Words in time before it casts Revelation, it spawned a green cyclone in the bottom of the arena. The boss will lower down one of its arms onto the left side of the arena with a very, very tiny knockback, and that's the cue to stack up in the green cyclone. You'll be thrown into the air as the boss tries to sweep you off of the arena, but as long as you've done everything correctly, swing and a miss. As soon as this finishes, stack four, and now the phase repeats. Everything from this point onwards is exactly the same in the exact same order. There's nothing different to happen. Eventually, if you do not kill the boss in time fast enough, the boss is going to decide he's had enough of you. You'll see a quote appear on the screen, and this means you've only got about five to 10 seconds before enrage hits. The boss will lower his arms down, but there's no storm of words cyclone to save you this time, which means if you've not killed the boss by now, you're dead. And that's it. That's the entirety of the Sephiroth Extreme. Thank you very much for watching my guide. I hope you found this useful. Let me know if you've got any comments, tips, suggestions, or just want to tell me that the debuff is blue and not green in the comments. Thanks so much, guys. Take care.